Hi everyone, welcome back with a new video on significance of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate has a role mainly in RBCs. Now how is it synthesized? By rapoport lubering shunt. Now in normally in glycolysis what happens? The intermediate 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate in a substrate level phosphorylation step that is it synthesizes ATP in this step. Now in RBCs what happens? 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate gets converted to 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate by an enzyme 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate mutase. Now the same enzyme has a phosphatase activity which is 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate phosphatase which again which degrades the 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate and the glycolysis can continue. Now, the in RBCs alone, there is a special role for this 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So, that is why during glycolysis, 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate is formed by an intermediate of glycolysis. Now, in this shunt mechanism, there is no ATP synthesized. Okay, there is no ATP synthesized. Now, what is this action of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate? Two, 3 bisphosphoglycerate if you take the RBC, in an RBC, you have hemoglobin. And the hemoglobin has four globin chains. What are they? Alpha 1, alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2. So, there are four globin chains. Now, in the beta 1 and beta 2 chains form a shallow cleft in a deoxygenated hemoglobin. In a deoxygenated hemoglobin, a shallow cleft is formed between beta 1 and beta 2 uh, globin chains which are formed by the cationic sites of the amino acids histidine 2, valine 1, Lysine 82 and histidine 143. So, look at the cationic sites here as well as in the other beta 2 chain also the histidine 2, valine 1 and lysine 82 and histidine 143. These have cationic sites. These cationic sites form a shallow cleft between them in a deoxygenated hemoglobin. In oxygenated hemoglobin what happens? The cleft is very narrow. The cleft is narrow. Now, the because the, uh, the cationic sites are not that prominent. Now, in this uh, cleft which is formed between the globin chains, the 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate can accommodate. So, the 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate is, is a negative allosteric modifier, right? It's a negative, it has negative uh, charge in them. So, this negative charge gets accommodated in the cleft between the globin chains by electrostatic interactions. By electrostatic interactions. In case of oxygen, oxy, oxygenated hemoglobin, what happens? The cleft is very narrow. So, 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate cannot accommodate itself in the oxygenated hemoglobin. So, only in deoxygenated hemoglobin, the 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate can accommodate itself in the cleft forming electrostatic interactions with the cationic sites of the globin chains and these cationic sites are prominently made by the histidine 2, valine 1, lysine 82 and histidine 143. Now what is the action of this 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate here? This stabilizes the tot conformation of hemoglobin. This stabilizes the tot conformation of this hemoglobin. So, it squeezes this hemoglobin causing unloading of oxygen. Squeezes the hemoglobin causing unloading of oxygen to the peripheral tissues. So, the function of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate is delivery of oxygen to the peripheral tissues. So, it causes unloading of oxygen. Now, look at this graph. This is the oxygen hemoglobin graph, hemoglobin dissociation curve. So, whenever the 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate is 0, if at all the 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate content in your, in your RBC is 0, what happens? Only the oxygen affinity is more. 
oxygen affinity is more but it does not deliver oxygen to the tissues so it does not deliver oxygen to the to the tissues so the partial pressure of oxygen in this case is very less but 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate concentration normally is equivalent to that of hemoglobin in an rbc in an rbc the concentration of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate and hemoglobin are similar so that is the reason why there is unloading of oxygen there is proper or adequate unloading of oxygen to the tissues right so because the concentration of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate is equivalent to that of the hemoglobin so if if the concentration of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate is even more the curve can shift to the right the curve shifts to the right so if it is even more in what all conditions can the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate can be more in conditions like high altitude as a compensatory mechanism in high altitude or chronic hypoxia yes chronic hypoxia or chronic anemia so in these cases as a compensatory mechanism the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate contents can be content can be elevated so what does it do it actually causes more unloading of oxygen to the tissues more unloading of oxygen to the tissues which is very much necessary in these conditions right so that is the function of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate now what is the role of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate in a transfused blood okay in a transfused blood so blood is stored in acid citrate dextrose what happens there is decrease in 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate so in a, in a stored blood the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate content decreases now when you transfuse this stored blood to a patient what happens there is high affinity for oxygen there is high affinity for oxygen after transfusion but since the levels of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate is low the unloading of oxygen to the tissues becomes very less so the there is reduced delivery oxygen delivery to the tissues peripheral tissues right so this is very dangerous but in case of normal individual the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate contents can be restored in 48 hours time after transfusion but in a severely ill patient if you are going to transfuse the blood in a severely ill patient they can become more sick yes or no they can become more sick because when you uh, transfuse the blood with reduced 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate content the oxygen delivery is also reduced yes the oxygen delivery is also reduced the patient becomes more sick so what is the solution you can add inosin to the stored blood so to the stored blood you can add inosin so what is the use of adding inosin inosin has ribose content in it this ribose can get phosphorylated yes it can get phosphorylated and can enter hexose monophosphate shunt pathway as it enters hexose monophosphate shunt pathway it can form more glucose 6 phosphate and what happens it forms intermediates of glycolysis the intermediate of glycolysis can form 2 3 bpg so inosin can be added in a stored blood to increase the levels of 2 3 bpg now when you transfuse this blood to a patient the levels of 2 3 bpg is adequate there to maintain the oxygen delivery to the peripheral tissues in those patients so thereby you can avoid the uh, complications in case of severely ill patients so we have seen about the significance of 2 3 bpg and where is it synthesized what is rapoport lubrin shunt and what is its mechanism of action in a hemoglobin and what is the function so 2 3 bpg levels can shift the oxygen dissociation curve to the right causing more unloading of oxygen to the peripheral tissues and what is the role of 2 3 bpg in transfused blood 